Last time we talked about the theory of Lagrange multipliers. This time we're going to work some problems. So the first problem is we've, we're sitting on the unit sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, and we want to maximize the function x squared plus 2y squared minus 3z squared. And then we want to minimize the function. In fact, we want to find all the local extrema. Okay, so in this case, our function g that we're setting equal to 0 is x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 1. And the gradient of g is just 2x, 2y, 2z. And the gradient of f is 2x, 4y minus 6z. And so we're one, we need to set up the equations. Gradient of f is lambda times the gradient of g. Okay, so if we write those equations out, At first glance, they look contradictory because you look at the first one, you say, oh, that must mean that lambda equals 1. You look at the second one, you say, oh, that must mean that lambda equals 2. You look at the third one, you say, oh, that must mean that lambda equals negative 3. But that isn't quite right. You get lambda equals 1 by dividing by x. What if x is 0? That's a possibility, too. Or if y is 0, then this is 0 equals 0 no matter what lambda is. It tells you nothing about lambda. And this is or z equals 0. So when doing Lagrange multiplier problems, you often have the situation that an equation seems to tell you what lambda is, but you always have to be careful to be sure that it's not just a 0 equals 0 equation. To be even more precise, if we look at the first equation and we put it put things on both sides, we get 2x times 1 minus lambda equals 0. That's what you get if you subtract uh, 2x lambda from both sides. And that means that either x is 0 or 1 minus lambda is 0. So lambda equals 1 or x equals 0. So we've got three possibilities. If lambda equals 1, then y has to be 0 and z has to be 0. And if y and z are 0, x has to be plus or minus 1 since we're on the unit sphere, and you plug in what you get for f of x, y, z, and you get 1. If lambda is 2, so th these are the points, plus or minus 1, 0, 0. If lambda is 2, then y doesn't have to be 0, but x and z do. So these give you the points 0, plus or minus 1, 0, and the function value there is 2. If lambda equals negative 3, then we get the points 0, 0, plus or minus 1. And f of x, y, z is negative 3. So here's a picture. Here are the points, here's the point 1, 0, 0. And the function value is 1. And likewise, at negative 1, 0, 0. At 0, 1, 0, you get... Um, the function value is 2. And at 0, 0, 1, the function value is negative 3. So this is our minimum. This is our maximum. And these are saddle points. OK, that's it for this example. Let's take a look at a, at a different kind of example. This one is geometric. We're going to work in the plane, so just two variables instead of three. We want to find the points on this ellipse that is closest and farthest from the origin. So the ellipse, it's an ellipse centered at x equals negative 1, y equals 0. So this is a picture of the ellipse. It has 9 is 3 squared, so this distance here is 3, and this distance here is 1. So where on that ellipse is closest to the origin? So the distance to the origin is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So minimizing that is the same thing as minimizing x squared plus y squared. So this is distance squared. And the function, our constraint is x plus 1 squared over 9 plus y squared minus 1. And so now we take our gradients. The gradient of f is just 2x, 2y. We 
radian of g is twice x plus 1 over 9 to y. And we set up our equations that 2x is lambda times twice x plus 1 over 9, and 2y is lambda times 2y. Now, again, you look at this and you say, hey, you're tempted to say, well, that means lambda equals 1. But actually means lambda equals 1 or y equals 0. Because if y equals 0, you have 0 over 0 no matter what lambda is. So let's explore those two possibilities. If lambda equals 1, then our first equation said that 2x is 2x plus 1 over 9 times lambda. So that's 2x plus 1 over 9. You multiply both sides by 9 halves, and you get 9x equals x plus 1. So x equals an eighth. And then we plug in our equation. x plus 1 is 9 eighths. So x plus 1 squared over 9 plus y squared equals 1. And we solve for y, and we get a number. Looking back at our, at our previous picture, this is going to give us points where x is 1 eighth and y is the square root of 55 64 or minus the square root of 55 64. These are the points that we've just discovered. So here are the coordinates of those points. And you take the function value, x squared plus y squared. That's 56 over 60 fourths, which simplifies to 7 eighths. So in fact, that's going to turn out to be our minimum. The other possibility was that y is 0. And if y is 0, well, then you are on the x-axis, and x has to either be negative 2 or 4. And you can see that the values of the function at negative at 2 is 4, and at negative 4 is 16. Those are farther away. So going back to our picture, let's put those in green. So what we have is four critical points. We have a minimum, a minimum, a local max, and an absolute max. And there we go. We found the closest and farthest points by using Lagrange multipliers.